Six has implemented position sticky, which is a new way to position elements and is uh, kind of similar to position fix. So the link uh, to ex to the, the the update is is is, is in here is, is in our GitHub account. Another thing is that there was this really nice uh, article about CSS round display. So CSS round display, in case you guys didn't know, is um is it, it came about because of all the advent of all the wearables that that um, recent years, right? And and a lot of the wearables, especially if they are watch faces, they are round. And until there has been no CSS that can cater to a round display. So that's, this is how the entire spec came about. So you can read that, the level one editor's draft, the link is there also. Um, Firefox and Chrome have been updated this month as well. How do I stop this? Yeah, they've been updated as well. So uh, Firefox 50 has come out and um, there are more developer-related updates that are interesting than... So one of the things is that the web console now understands source map, but it's disabled by default, so you have to go into settings to enable it. And uh, the box model view has been moved to the computed view. There's a screenshot in the link. For Opera and Chrome, the, the CSS text size adjust, which has gone in, and user select is now unprefixed, so not a very fast month, but that's it. So then, uh, okay, then that's me. The next is me. Okay, uh, I am going to talk about this. Um, so today I'm just going to introduce a bit about uh, Chinese typography. I know, even though not every, like, the percentage of Chinese people here is not that much. Uh, but you know, being deaf as Asian and all, I'm just representing a bit of Asian culture. Um, but okay. <laughs> okay. So how this came about actually was quite interesting. Um, I don't know if you guys know who is Jen Simmons, but Jen Simmons is a developer that uh, I respect a lot and I, I really admire her her work. She's uh, she she I think she's currently at, working at Mozilla and she's really big on. Uh, CSS and CSS layouts. Actually, together with uh, Rachel Andrew is in the audience today. They are like the one-two punch of CSS layouts. So um, Rachel, Rachel will be uh, joining us for a, a fireside chat after this. So I'm going to make this quick. So basically, she does, Jen Simmons does a lot of uh, talks about how to do layout with uh, modern CSS techniques. And one of the things that she, she covers is something called writing mode, which um, like most of us are used to, especially because we work on the web, the writing systems that we're used to is the standard Latin-based uh, horizontal top to bottom. But if you are like me, you know, you're Chinese, um, we, there is some well, Chinese text is laid out some from, from top to bottom, right to left, and there are also Hebrew scripts that are right to left instead. So basically, writing systems are all manners of directions. It just happens to be that we are used to seeing only one. So before writing mode came about, or you couldn't really you, you can't really do vertical layouts or even you know right to left layouts without a lot of like hacky ways. But now that um, so I, okay, basically I built something. Um, so I was riding my bike and then I somehow felt that I felt compelled to build. I was like, why can't we have? given that we have responsive uh, web layouts now and everything, why can't we have a Chinese layout that is right to left? Because sometimes when I'm on the train and I see people reading uh, uh, Japanese or Chinese uh, novels, it's, um, it's, it's top to bottom. But I remember when I was younger, and this is more for like novels, so like Xiao Shuo, right? They would be the, they'll be laid out in uh, vertical layouts. So there are these small, I don't know if I'm the only one who actually read these things when I was younger. It's, it's, it's really just like fiction novel storybooks. So they are like about this size and they are really read from right to left and they are laid out 
vertically, but I hardly ever see them anymore, actually. Even now, printed books mostly is horizontal layout. So I was like, I'm, I'm pretty sure we can actually do this on the web, just, just, just for fun. So, so I, I built, tried to build it. Um, so I will, um, this is how it looks like. Uh, yeah. So it, you, can, you can read it. You, it scrolls um, horizontally. Uh, then I thought, like, why not just switch? So there's, you can switch it back to the standard horizontal layout if you want to. But why would you? Why, why, why would you do that? Let's, let's go with this. So one of the interesting things, uh, before I go into the actual code and the CSS, I'm just going to talk a little bit about, OK, I really talked about this. Chinese characters. So for the benefit of those of you who aren't Chinese, um, there are actually two, um, I'll call them versions. There's a traditional Chinese glyphs and there are simplified Chinese glyphs. Uh, the actual history of, of how this came about ties in very closely to the history of China. So I'm not going to go into it that. Just know that if you can look at the third line, the four, the four words there, um, the first set are the, is the traditional style, and the simplified set is, is, is the latter one. As you can see, the simplified version has less strokes and it's simpler to write. But they, essentially, they are read the same, uh, they are pronounced the same, they, they're, just, they're just written differently. So if you, if you can imagine, uh, for the Chinese language, right, Chinese is the only logographic language that is commonly used in the world today. Logographic meaning that each of the glyphs can by itself have meaning, or when they're used in combination, like maybe two glyphs to become a phrase or, or four to a, a long phrase or an entire sentence. But these glyphs have meaning as opposed to, uh, let's talk, we just say English, right? It's more of a phonetic thing. B basically, what the let alphabets represent is how the, how the word sounds, right? So for, for Chinese language, you can imagine I, I personally cannot, cannot even remember learning Chinese, but I can imagine if someone was, were to learn it later on in life, I think it would be quite challenging because there's a lot of memory involved because each of the glyphs means something. So for a typical font face, a typical Chinese font face, there's about 20,000 glyphs, and that's for simplified. So a, a traditional Chinese font face is probably about 30,000 glyphs. So if you've ever tried to use a, a custom Chinese font and you download it, you realize that it usually goes in the megabytes. So that's why actually on the web, um, you don't see a lot of custom fonts being used. We just go with system fonts because as of now, it's still not very viable in terms of performance to actually use Chinese characters. Um, so a, a, just a very quick run through about the different types of Chinese fonts because in, uh, when we talk about uh, Latin-based characters, uh, Latin-based typography, we go with serif or sans serif. So that's the two major categories. Uh, for Chinese fonts, there are a bit more than that. Uh, I, I kind of classify them into six different types. So first one is called song ti, which is sort of, but not really, the equivalent of serif. So as you can see, it's um, the, ed the kind of like miniature serifs, but you, you can't really call them serifs. But this is the closest equivalent to a serif font that you can get for, for Chinese. Then you have the sans serif equivalent or Haiti. So these are the sort of two, if you want to look at it that way, okay, my, my, my slides are being cut off, but the, so Ming, Ming Liu and Simpson are the system fonts that you can use if you want to have a so-called serif look. For Haiti, there is a Microsoft Ya Hei or Sim Hei. So, for the, for, the, for the English speakers who are thinking, what are these nonsensical fonts in, 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 in my font drop down that are taking up space? I'm sorry, they're for Chinese fonts. <laughs> then we also have Kai Ti, which is like the script font. Um, personally, when I, I, I kind of like how this looks because it's like, it looks calligraphic. I think it looks very nice. Um, so the equ English equivalent I can think of is, is a script font. Uh, like ca cost calligraphy. So uh, if you see the words Kai in any of your fonts, that's the font that you're looking at. And we also have this thing called Yuan Ti. Um, I would think it, it's like a rounded sans serif font. It's the equivalent. <laughs> Sorry? 
I, 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 I don't think it's the equivalent of Comic Sans. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it does look very friendly, let's put it that way, okay? So yeah, we have Yuan Ti and uh, Fang Song Ti. Okay, Fang Song Ti looks... What, what's the difference between Fang Song Ti and Song Ti, right? The difference is that for Song Ti, which is the first one, the, um, the horizontal bars are like really straight, but these are slightly slanted. That's the difference. So think of it as a more pretentious version of Song Ti. How about that? <laughs> right? And uh, we also have the you know, display font, so all manners of whatever. But these are usually more challenging to use online because, again, as I said, um, one, font, one font file is going to hit you like one, two megabytes, maybe. So we go with system fonts for now. So if you want to use Chinese fonts, um, there are two web font services available. Uh, just Font, I think, okay, one is from Taiwan and one is from China. So I think Just Font is the Taiwan one and Youzuku is the, the Chinese one. So, but it involves more, you still have to put in like JS and it, it's, not, it's not as simple as uh, Google Fonts that you can just declare your font face and anything. But I'm, they are constantly working on it. Like I first heard of them about four years ago and, and there have been a lot of updates to their services since. So this is something that if you're actually, you have to build a Chinese language style or anything and, and your designers like give you some ridiculous designs, it's something to consider that, you know, it's a possibility instead of just starting out, no, no custom fonts for you. Like now, like maybe, okay, let me look into it. And uh, one last thing about using Chinese fonts is you want to declare your target English fonts first. Because even though you're building a site completely in Chinese, there'll still be cases where you end up with alphabets, uh, either for um, labels or maybe uh, new numerals or, or stuff like that. And if you don't de declare your English fonts first, right, it's going to end up rendering in the Chinese font version. So if you're using Windows, I think the fallback Latin characters for Chinese fonts doesn't look all that nice. It, it, it doesn't look very nice. So if you declare your English fonts first, if the, the glyph, the Chinese glyph doesn't exist in your English font, then it'll just fall back to the Chinese font, which is what you wanted to begin with. And your Latin-based characters will be in the uh, a nice, nice, nice font that you chose for it to begin uh, originally. So, so that's that. Um, so some basic terminology about writing mode is... Um, so you have what we call the line orientation, which is the, how your, your characters, whether they are upright or um, uh, sideways. So that's line orientation. Block flow direction is how each block uh, is, is rendered on the screen. So the normal one that we are all used to is horizontal TB, which is horizontal top to bottom, meaning the block flow is from top to bottom. Now the other two would be, um, vertical right to left and vertical left to right. So as you can see, the, the, text, the text flow and the block flow direction are, are different. Oh no, so, sorry, the text flow will always be the same. Uh, it was, it's always clockwise 90 degrees, but um, the block flow direction, it would be different for left, right versus right, left. So then um, the way the rendering engine rotates these characters when, when you change the writing mode. There are two ways you can do it. So for CJK fonts, chi uh, CJK stands for Chinese, Japanese, Korean, right? For CJK fonts, intrinsically, the characters know to stay upright when you change the writing mode. So when, that's why for Chinese characters, you, you don't have to, when you declare the writing mode to change, the, the characters just tr um, translate down. So, so the one on the left is a, uh, it, they just translate downwards. But if you apply writing mode vertical to a typical Latin block of text, right, it actually rotates. So your, your, whole, your, your characters just do this 90 degree rotation. But there are certain CSS rules that allow us to actually change this orientation, as you can see, uh, I will show later. So the three rules that I'm just going to briefly touch upon is uh, that, that can do all this typography manipulation. Uh, first one is writing mode. So there are five values that you will take. Uh, horizontal TB, which is the default and all, the one that we are all used to. Then there's vertical RL, uh, which is vertical right to left. That means, so if I didn't do anything to 1987, it just, just stands on its side. 
So, and same goes, it is vertical left, right, and then you just read it from left to right instead. So the bottom two, uh, there's an asterisk there because the spec is still being worked on and this may or may not be dropped off. But what you can, as you can see, you can actually make the Chinese characters, which are actually intrinsically upright, you can actually make them turn together with, I'm not, this probably won't apply to, Chinese text because I don't know why you want to read it that way because you can't really read it that way but I'm, I'm, I think for some other languages this might be uh, applicable so there's a sideways I think that they might be still be debating on whether to implement this for into the spec for, for certain or not but the first three are confirmed confirmed in so then after that we have uh, the text orientation so as I mentioned just now you either translate your glyphs or you rotate them right uh, FYI, that's my name in Chinese. <laughs> Couldn't think of better words to use, I'm sorry. <laughs> so the text orientation property, that has, there are three values. Again, um, the default is mixed. So but by default, you can have upright and you can have rotated as well. You can force the digits to, to go upright by, by setting text orientation to upright. So for this particular example, right, I actually wrapped the 1987 in a span and then I applied uh, text orientation upright to it. So that's how you, this is actually quite good for, for dig, later there'll be another uh, property that caters specifically for digits. Um, and then finally, that's the sideways orientation. But this one is text combined upright. So um, this is an actual use case because if you are in Taiwan or Japan, your, the, year, the year system that they use is, um, so Taiwan will use something called Ming Guo, and um, there's history to that, so I'm not going to touch into that, but their are, are years, at least for now, is not four digits. So in fact, before, I can't remember, but they were recently just got into the 100, so it recently just became three digits. And if it's three digits, you can still, you can still sort of just squeeze them into the space of one glyph. So, you can do that by actually declaring text combined upright. So what text combined upright does is that whatever is wrapped within that rule, the browser will try to render it in the space of a single character glyph. I have not tried the extreme use case of squeezing in six digits, but so far for three digits, it's, it kind of still works, I think. Uh, I think for the Japanese character, uh, J Japanese years, they're still on two digits. So actually, it, it, it looks quite nice. So if it's a, just a standard date and month, actually, it fits, fits quite easily in, inside the space of one character. So for that particular property is you can use digits integer to specify how many digits you want. So uh, minimum is two, maximum is four. Uh, I guess they thought about the extreme use case of six digits as well. But right now, it's uh, not implemented in any browser yet. I think they're still working through it. So all just means it's going to squeeze everything. I should go and try this later and update people what happens if you put six digits in. It's probably going to look horrendous. So these are the three uh, properties I came across when I was trying to, trying to build my funny switching demo. So what I realized that if you're going to lay out text in uh, Chinese, there's, there's some, some typography. You know, when we do for English sites, there are some standard rules. Like, oh, your character length should be 45 to 75 characters, things like that. Uh, for Chinese text, there's, uh, there are some slightly different rules. Uh, so the first one is obviously to use and declare the correct font family as um, there's a difference between traditional Chinese font and uh, simplified English, uh, simplified Chinese font. So if your text itself is, for example, written in traditional Chinese and you declare a simplified Chinese font, there may be cases where certain characters won't render properly because it doesn't exist in that font family. Because I mentioned there are actually more glyphs for a traditional Chinese font. So you may or may not run into the problem depending on what you're writing. So you want to be cognizant of that, whether your actual text, the, the, the text that you're inputting in HTML, what is it? Is it traditional Chinese or is it simplified Chinese? And also you want to make sure that the font size is large enough. Um, because Chinese text is, is kind of dense and it's, it's kind of compact. And if 
the standard font size of 16, I find, is a bit too small. I mean, it, especially if you're going to read it on a screen, a backlit screen, it actually makes sense to make it larger. In fact, some, uh, some English sites already suggest 20 is a better, is a, is a better font size. So uh, for this, I, I say you make your own judgment call. Yeah. Uh, and uh, line height, actually line height, right? One, the standard English suggestion, I, I read it somewhere, it was about between 1.2 to 1.4. For Chinese text, it's not enough. Because as I mentioned, Chinese characters are very dense. So you really want to set it a bit further apart. Otherwise, it's really, really hard to read. Uh, use text align justify. Uh, because each character is a square. Right. If you text a line justify, it makes everything much neater and, and from a visual perspective, it's a lot more comfortable to, to see as opposed to if it's not a line. So can you imagine like the, the grid is just, it's not even following a grid. If you use text align justify, it kind of aligns the text back into a grid and it's really more comfortable to read. Uh, oh, so, so my take on this was if you keep it to 30 to, 30 to 40 characters, it's actually quite good for reading. I'm taking the cue from, as I mentioned, those like those novels I used to read as a kid, they were about this size. So like, oh, there are about 30, 40 characters there, let's go with that. So, so that's that. Um, and uh, for paragraphs, because in Chinese, the, you, they are, they are, for print in Chinese, right, the, the paragraphs are denoted as such by leaving two character spaces in front of uh, each paragraph, but for web, and there's this, because the W3C actually has published a really comprehensive document on the requirements for Chinese text layout, and in there, it, it does mention that even though the two character space is suggested mostly for print, for a web reading, they would say, they suggest for to go for uh, just larger spacing per paragraph, and just let all the text in then be, be the same. Um, so you can go with that, or you, I tried going with the two character indent, it looked a bit weird to me. Uh, Japanese text actually just indents by one character, so I don't think there are any hard and fast rules. Just, I, I guess go, what, go with what visual style works for you, right? So, so yeah, so all the links to, to the relevant uh, research is, is here. Um, somebody actually uh, created a framework Called, uh, which is the very, very last link. Uh, it's read Han Zi Biao Zong Ge Shi, which uh, is actually this an, a set of CSS and uh, J JavaScript to, to sort of settle your typography for you. So again, it, it's a framework. And uh, if you are doing a majorly Chinese website and you want the typography to be set properly, this, this is actually not bad. For my, my little experiment, my styles are minimal, so I don't need a framework for this. So yeah. That's that. So then, I guess you are sick of me. So we can actually move on to the main event, which is the fireside chat with Zell, um, Rachel, who has so gladly agreed to this, even though she looks so tired. I'm so sorry. And uh, Chris. So what